My name is Mike, and I'm from Engineers Without Borders, and I'm a guest interviewer today. And I'd like to ask you a couple questions about projecting change in preparation for the Projecting Change Film Festival. Uh -huh. um, is there anything that uh, that you've done, or you feel that you've done in the last little while, that sort of projects change and and could be seen as kind of uh, projecting change in a very global or high level sense? I think my whole life is about projecting change, okay. and I think the Green Party is about projecting change. Um, you know, this election, what's not being talked about is the way in which Canada should change to get with the global agenda. Um, people talk about the economy, but what they're failing to talk about is the fact that Canada is being regressive and moving backwards in terms of uh, ramping up fossil fuels instead of moving forward progressively and changing to a renewable energy economy. And the Green Party is the champion of those kinds of issues. And in my campaign, even today, um, I launched my community-based office, which was an electric car vehicle. Great. And what sort of concrete steps um, is the Green Party going to be taking in the next little while to sort of change Canada for the future and move it to a much more sustainable economy um, in terms of like getting those green technologies and those non-fossil fuel technologies out in common place? I am to be elected as a Green Party MP for Vancouver Centre and with Elizabeth May as a Green Party MP from Sanish Gulf Islands, I think we'll have a very strong voice in the Parliament of Canada and uh, with the rising Green vote and our election and the other parties will not be able to ignore the issues um, and they do, they back burner the issues, they sideline them, they treat them with, you know, just a, you know, as, as, as very minimalist uh, approach as they can but with the green presence growing, uh, they really do have to take them seriously. So we will um, push to get government to take seriously its action on climate change. That impacts the action on the economy, making sure we go with renewables and really ramp up that sector of the economy. Um, and, uh, and, and really, it's about changing to a healthier path. And that has a lot of social implications, but it's, it's all for the better. So in general, what are a few things you've done in recent times that you think have sort of benefited the world or changed the world um, in a positive way? In well, in, in some ways uh, we can't because we haven't been in government for five years. Right. But when I was in government, we did a lot of things that benefited or changed the world. And, and as Minister of State for Multiculturalism, I was very involved in a lot of those international efforts. But more recently, I am the gender representative for Organization and Security Council in Europe, which allows me to influence gender issues and to bring about gender change in about 57 nation states. Okay. Um, and so looking forward and kind of projecting into the future, what type of things do you see happening that, or things that you would really love to see happen um, with the government or with the government? Well, I, I would like us to see, to see us go back to Africa. Okay. I think that when Chrétien focused on Africa in the G8, G20 meeting that we had here, uh, we felt that Africa was the poorest nation. We felt that we needed to focus for developmental aid on the poorest nations. Uh -huh. Not on the nations we had commercial relationships with, but on poor nations that really need our help. We also thought that working with women in our own experience as Canada actually achieved more outcomes or better outcomes than we would if we had not worked with women. Because we find that women, uh, in, especially in farming issues and small enterprise, uh, that when women changed their status and begin to do these things, they actually changed their village and they changed their surroundings and they had a far more, a far greater impact on their, on their surroundings than, than if, they would, if women did not do it. Yeah. Would you see going back into specific countries in Africa or sort of tackling as more of a holistic strategy? Well, I think we'd, we'd mo mostly look at the countries that are in re the poorest nations. I think poorest we'd nations. start with the poorest nations. Mm -hmm. And I think we'd like to look at health as a yep. major issue. Um, diseases like malaria and tuberculosis and HIV AIDS are core ones that are still not really dealt with mm -hmm. appropriately. We, as you know, the Christian bill for actually bringing drugs to those countries actually did not do as well as we thought it would right. because the people who were supposed to bring the aid, the drugs, uh, didn't tend to pan out that way. It took Big too long. Yeah, or something like that. yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. That was a, that was a real disappointment for all of us. Yeah. Um, but I think we need to look at that. We need to look at economic development issues, and I think that that's where we talk about small enterprise, micro enterprise. I think we want to look at helping to develop dem democratic institutions in those countries because. Democratic institutions provide the stability we need for social change and for all of those things to occur. So when we invest in health mm -hmm. and in education and you look at small enterprise and you help with developmental aid and you also help with diplomacy and um, getting people to live together and with yeah. demo democratic institutions, you create a stability. I also think that we need to focus on the Millennium Goals okay. once again mm -hmm. and be sure that those are what we look at achieving and not inflict our own ways on other people. 
-hmm. Do you think the government of Canada has any experience or sort of speciality that they can use to um, push one of, the, like you've mentioned a lot of avenues of development. Do you think yes. there's one that we have special expertise in that we could really make a big difference with? I think democratic institutions is one, and I think um, economic development and health mm -hmm. are the other two. that We really have a lot of expertise in, and we have people trust us in these issues. And do you see the government of Canada funding more sort of big infrastructure type projects or working more with small scale enterprise or what sort of... We found that small scale works best, but I think we want to be able to do what we can to lever solid investment within these countries so that they can develop jobs and a, and a larger economic development platform. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we found that working in small areas with small villages and with, with women and with small enterprises actually gives us the bottom up. Okay. achievements that we're looking for. But you need to deal with governments in many ways if you're going to get education and health hmm. going. Interesting. But we would like to work with NGOs because we've had good experience with NGOs. Yeah. Uh, I can't say that those NGOs are there anymore because many of them have had their funding removed because they didn't agree with the Harper government. But we'll bring them back. Okay. So sort of a combination of a bottom-up or bottom-up bottom up and, and top-down. Yeah. Because you need to change infrastructure as well and, and, and mm -hmm. systems of governance if you're going to make sure that the people have the benefit of what you're trying to do. What's your opinion on the way that um, sort of change and development has been going through, um, for example, the model that the government of China is doing with a lot of very heavy infrastructure development um, and very heavy investment in a lot of countries in Africa? Do you think Canada has a role to play in that type of aspect or no, not really? We have never played that kind of role really unless we were going to, to render developmental aid and we're doing aid and we're doing engineering in countries that where they're holding infrastructure have been decimated by war, by conflict. Right. Uh, we don't have that kind of experience. And, and I don't know what that experience means. I, I must say I, 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 I have to watch and see what that kind of aid brings with it. I mean, yeah. you, you always recall the days when holus bolus big governments moved into countries and what was the result. I don't know. We'll have to watch and see. <laughs> That's not cool. been the Canadian way, though. Cool. Um, did you have anything else you'd like to add or say, or otherwise it was fantastic? No, I think what I'd like to suggest is this, that we have been a leader, Canada, in reaching out to countries that need assistance. It was Paul Martin, as you know, who started the G20, mm -hmm. which I think needs to replace the G8 at the moment. Okay. I think they introduced more, more, second, more second world countries into the mix. Mm -hmm. But I also think that, that we need to look at how we empower countries, empower the people in those countries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're looking at for more civic participation in those countries as well. Okay. I know that one of the things that I was responsible for and did a lot of work in was in South Africa when they first achieved democracy, mm -hmm. that we were able to assist people in development, developing civil society engagement. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's an important piece. When people are educated and know their rights and become really active civil society, yeah. lots can be done. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Fantastic. Thank okay. you very much Thanks. for your time. Not at all. Not <laughs> it was at all. Great talking to you. Thank you. I think the NDP is all about projecting change, actually, mm -hmm. uh, because we want to make we want to make real changes. We don't like the way that the, that Ottawa is working. I mean, Ottawa is broken, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to fix it. And we want to fix you know our all our ideas um, regarding changing. It's something that we want to do within the first hundred days when we uh, get into power, um, mm -hmm. rather than you know liberals and conservatives talk about about social justice issues, but they say, yeah, when we can afford it in three to four years. Yep. Whereas we really believe that we can't afford not to put money into social programs and making real change to help people out. Is there a concrete example that really highlights for you what like one thing you'd love to achieve in those first hundred days that you really think would make a difference? Um, well, the, the issue that seems front and center in, in Vancouver Center is housing issues. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one of our uh, incumbent NDP candidates, uh, Libby, Libby Davies, has put forth a national housing strategy that died on the order paper when the election was called. Okay. So that would be great to be able to bring that up and, and get it going because we used to have a national housing strategy and mm -hmm. now we don't. And you can see the, the effects, you know, homelessness is one of the more obvious effects of not having a national housing strategy. But also, you know, the building stock is crumbling and we haven't built any new apartments in Vancouver Centre for 25 years. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. So I'd like to see. And uh, and last question within the campaign: Is mm -hmm. there anything sort of to do with the campaign that you think is um, has been sort of environmentally sustainable, or is it like moving Canada towards a future in in sort of a broad and global sense? Oh yes, I think there's so much in our platform that, that's moving towards um, taking the subsidies off the tar sands, <laughs> for instance, and. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> taking the subsidies off the tar sands and putting it more towards environmental uh, non-fossil fuel, um, uh, non-fossil fuels. And also um, just 
restoring restoring what has been taken away from us under the Harper government. You know, so. Excellent. Yeah. Great. All Great. right. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. Thank you.